Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Good morning. Welcome to the 49th lecture on economics, management and entrepreneurship. If you remember, towards the end of the last lecture, we in fact started the topic. We started the discussion on capital financing. So, there we said that any company would require money to fund its fixed assets and working capital assets. For that it requires funds. Thus funds can be of a long term nature, a medium term nature or a short term nature. And there are different forms of fund and there are different sources of fund. In our last slide, in the last lecture, we, we were discussing about private and public sources of capital. This was the last slide and we said that when money is raised through securities through the public or from the public, then it has to go through the government procedure and the SEBI is the body through which all these public offerings are made. Whereas, one can also go through private capital, private means of raising capital through banks from banks and financial institutions and also by issuing securities to be placed privately with a small group of investors. This was what we discussed in our last class. We will continue our discussion and you will see that there is a whole gamut of sources of financing capital for any enterprise. Now, there are at different stages of a company, there are different requirements of funds. At the formation stage, issue of equity shares to promoters is normally made. Those who promote the starting of an enterprise, they are entitled to get the equity shares. Also loan from banks and financial institutions are obtained. In addition, the company can go for shares and debentures to the relatives, friends, business partners, employees, financial institutions banks, mutual funds and venture capital funds. Now, when the company is in the growth stage, normally capital is sought from public. The first issue is called the initial public offerings and subsequent offerings are normally called seasoned offerings or secondary offerings. Let us study financing with common stock or equity funding. Equity shareholders collectively own a company as we have already seen the real owners of a company are the equity shareholders. They enjoy the rewards and also bear the risk of ownership. But as you know the liability is limited unlike an entrepreneur or a partner whose liability is unlimited as we have already discussed. Equity shareholders enjoy right to income, right to vote and they get priority to buy new shares when they are issued by the company and of course, they have the last priority 
when the company is liquidated. So, this is a because they are owners they get the last priority. The advantage advantages of common stock financing are many. Firstly, it is a permanent capital without any liability for repayment, no obligation for payment of dividends only when the board of company decides to pay the dividends, the dividends are paid else not and therefore, it enhances the credit worthiness of the firm whenever the company wishes to get money from banks or financial institutions then it is it has higher credit worthiness. Of course, there are certain disadvantages usually the cost of issuing of capital is very high and the rate of return expected by the shareholders is also high. Dividends are not tax deductible by the company when they pay dividends taxes are also paid by them. Cost of issuing equity stocks is high that I already have told because of underwriting commission, brokerage costs etcetera. Sale of equity stocks dilute the control of the existing shareholders these are the disadvantages. When the company goes for financing with preferred stock then there are certain characteristics. Firstly, dividend need not be made it is not obligatory it is entirely within the discretion of the directors. Dividends are a fixed percentage of the shares per value whenever they are paid. Again dividends are not tax deductible. Dividends if unpaid at some time cumulate and are paid later and when liquidated the claims of the stockholders is prior to the claim of the equity stockholders. The equity stockholders have the last priority in getting their money back when the company gets liquidated and the preferred stockholders have a higher priority. But these stockholders do not have the right to vote. The firm can call the shares wholly or partly at a certain price. Shareholders can convert to equity shares at a certain ratio if the firm so desires and preference shares may be perpetual or redeemable. Redeemable means the company can buy back the preference shares or perpetual means it can continue. The advantages of preference stock financing is that no legal action if dividends are not paid and being part of the stockholder security it enhances the credit worthiness of the firm and because there is no voting right the control is not diluted and unlike bonds or debentures there is no mortgage. The disadvantages could be that it is expensive because they are not tax deductible, skipping payment of dividends can damage the firm's image. Now, if on the other hand the company goes for borrowing funds to meet its capital needs then there are normally two ways but of course, you will see that there are many ways one is the long term bonds or debentures and term loans or term finance. We shall discuss these ones in great detail now. Firstly bonds or debentures basically they are required for short term financing through promissory notes 
given to banks to generate funds needed for 2 to 5 years. A bond is thus, these are promissory notes, promissory notes usually are short term financing whereas, a bond is a long term note given to the lender by the borrower stipulating the terms of repayment and other conditions. So, whereas, promissory notes are short term financing or short term finance for short term requirement, bonds are for long term requirements and normally the government bonds or bonds issued by government undertakings and government financial institutions are generally unsecured obligations and are called bonds. Whereas, all debt issues that are made by private entities are usually secured obligations and are called debentures. There is a fine difference between bonds and debentures. Normally, bonds are those debts that are issued by government of India, state governments, government undertakings and finance institutions and normally they are unsecured meaning that there is no mortgage associated with it. Whereas, when they are issued by private organizations they are usually secured and they are called debentures and principal and interests are normally paid at the specified debts. Now, there are different characteristics of debentures. There is a trustee who manages the issue of debentures normally it is done through a trust deed or also called indenture and usually a trustee is a bank or an insurance company or a firm of attorneys. Debentures can be converted into equity shares in those cases they are called convertible debentures. Normally there is a, it as I said it can be secured or it can be unsecured when secured it is secured by a mortgage normally immovable properties and to pay back the debt in time company creates a sinking fund paying every month certain amount or every year certain amount to that fund to be able to pay back the debt with interest in time. The call feature of a debenture is that the company can redeem the debentures at a specified price and the redemption period is usually specified and the amount is also specified and the interest that the company pays is called the bond rate. It is a statutory obligation and it is tax deductible expense. So, interests are tax deductible unlike the dividends. The advantages of debt financing interest being tax deductible debt capital is less costly and since the debt holders or bond holders are not owners control is not diluted. There is a call provision sometimes associated therefore, the flexibility in capital structure can be more. Issue costs are significantly lower compared to that of equity and preference capital shares and it provides protection against high unanticipated inflation. If inflation is high then real cost of interest paid is much less in case of debt financing, but there are certain disadvantages as well. First is that it is obligatory on the part of the company or the firm to pay back its payments in time therefore, it incurs a financial risk. It reduces the firm's financial flexibility and the real cost of debt can be high if the inflation is unexpectedly low just as 
it provides a protection against high unanticipated inflation. The reverse may also be true if the inflation is not so high then the real cost can be very high. Bonds are usually issued in units each having a par value or a face value and when it matures this amount is paid back by the company. Two ways of paying interests they can be registered bonds or coupon bonds. In case of registered bonds interests are paid to the bondholders <coughs> when they become due. In terms of coupon bonds the bondholders convert coupons that are attached to the bonds into cash at a bank that means they actually submit the coupon to a bank and get cash in turn they are called coupon bonds. There are different types of innovative bonds that have come into existence. We will discuss some of them. One is called a deep discount bond or a zero interest coupon. That means in this case no interest is paid. The principal and all interests accumulated is paid back at the end of the maturity period redeemable after specified number of years with specified amount and normally therefore, the discount rate is extremely high that means you pay a small amount and you get a very large amount at the end of specified number of years so, thus the discount rate is extremely high that is called a deep discount or a zero interest coupon bond. Another type of bond is convertible debentures. Here the debenture can be partially or wholly convertible into equity shares following the SEBI guidelines the security exchange board of India guidelines they are called convertible debentures. Normally bonds are associated with fixed interest rates, but it is possible to have floating interest rates. In such cases the interest rates are linked to a benchmark rate. Normally they are the treasury bill interest rate the government interest rate. When the government interest rate varies the interest rate paid to the bondholder also varies and there is a fixed relationship between the bond interest rate and the treasury bill interest rate they are called floating rate bonds. Next indexed bonds in this case there are two types of payments or payoffs to the bondholders. First is a fixed amount which is a very big amount normally the discount bond and a variable component that depends on some index like treasury bill interest rate. So, it can be it can have the combination of the deep discount bond and the and the indexed uh, and the uh, the floating rate bonds excepting that it is the discount rate is not very high. Then there can be strips debentures in which the particular debenture may have different components one for the principal and many for the interests and each of them can be separately listed and traded in the stock exchange. So, these are strips debentures. Now, normally in the primary market there are different methods of offering these securities. If shares equity shares are offered they are called public offering and the first time when they are offered they are called initial public offering as I told you already and subsequently if the company needs more capital through capital market then it can also issue seasoned equity or secondary equity offerings for additional capital. 
also as I have told you bonds can be issued to the public and it is much less complicated than the issue of equity shares. So, this method of offering is known as public offering. Next we have rights issue. It involves selling securities in the primary market by issuing the rights to the existing shareholders. That means, that when the company issues additional equity capital, it has to be offered to the existing shareholders first on a pro rata basis. So, in this case the, the holders of the equity shares have a right to be the first to be offered their shares when additional shares are issued by the company. And the third type of offering is private placement. So, here issue of securities that means, shares and convertible debentures are made to a select group of persons which is to be less than 50 then it is called private placement. So, these are basically public offerings and primary market rights issue. Now, we come to term loans which is also known as term finance. Usually term loans are used to finance fixed assets and working capital needs and they are offered by banks and financial institutions and we have listed some of them in India. <coughs> All India financial institutions like IFCI, ICICI, IDBI. There are specialized institutions such as Exim Bank, IL and FS, Power Finance Corporation, IDFC and SIDB, and insurance companies like LIC and GIC. There are state level financial institutions such as state industrial development corporations, state financial corporations and of course, the commercial banks. Now, for import of certain assets, rupee term loans uh, sorry foreign currency terms term loan uh, may be obtained or otherwise rupee term loans can be obtained as term loans. Normally, these loans are repayable between 1 to 10 years and usually there is a security associated with this term loan and usually it is the asset that is bought which is called the prime security or it can also be another asset which is also which is then called collateral security. And mortgage of immovable property for fixed assets if the term loan then it is a mortgage basically or it can be a movable property such as uh, such as uh, a vehicle uh, or inventory it is hypothecated hypothecated to the term loan uh, to the bank if it is for working capital advance such as inventory. Now, financial institutions usually levy many conditions while they lend the money and these conditions are known as covenants and normally they are with regard to the nature of the project. These conditions are levied so that they do not run the risk that the project will not be a successful project. Also term loans can be partly convertible into equity if the financial institutions so wishes. Lastly, several banks may join together and then it is uh, to give a loan single loan in that case it is called a syndicated loan. 
the next firm of financing working capital is called working capital advances. Normally, they are given by commercial banks against hypothecation that is against movable property or inventory or pledge. Pledge means in this case goods are actually deposited with the banks. The difference is that here the goods are deposited with the banks and hypothecation means the goods remain with the firm. And there are four ways in which it operates. One is cash credit or overdraft. The borrowing company borrows as often as it needs provided it does not exceed a limit. This is called cash credit or overdraft or it can take a loan which is a fixed amount or the purchase bill is sent to the bank for payment. This is called purchase or discount of bills. The bills are discounted or it can be a letter of credit in which case the bank opens a letter of credit in favor of the firm to enable it to buy an asset or service and undertakes the responsibility of meeting its obligation that is called a letter of credit. So, these are different forms of getting working capital advance. Next private placement. Now, compared to public issues private placement of debentures with a small number of financial institutions is normally cheap. Here one has to just write a promissory note rather than appoint a trustee, follow certain standard products, uh, standard process and procedures. This is process. and enumerate and satisfy all the covenants or conditions. Now, these private placements are good for normally small and medium sized firms. Now, for big firms or large firms, the alternative is project finance. It is a loan granted by a financial institution, especially a large international bank, maybe World Bank, for a particular project. This is like a private placement to a large firm. Projects like power projects, telecom projects, transportation projects are usually funded as project finance by large international banks. Here the stockholders have to sign contracts and share the risks. Who are the stockholders? The investors, the contractors, plant managers, suppliers, customers and government. All of them have to sign the contract before the bank gives the money. And the debt is then supported by the project cash flows. So, it is hoped that the project will generate revenues and cash from which the debt will be paid back. This is called project finance usually for large projects and for large farms. <coughs> now, apart from these there are a large number of other sources of capital which we would like to discuss. One default credit, this means the, let us say machinery is purchased, the supplier of the machineries allow repayment over a period of time that means it is not purchase on cash but over a period of time the payment can be made. 
this is a case of credit purchase this is also one way one form of source of capital the company does not have to pay back the money at the same time when it buys the asset next is lease finance and higher purchase here the firm is the lessee the lesser grants the lessee the right to use an asset such as a building land or equipment in return for periodic lease rental payments thus the lesser is the owner so a land owner or a building owner allows the firm to use these assets by paying rental payments this is lease finance and naturally these payments are tax deductible whereas the owner is the actual the lesser is the actual owner also it is possible to have a higher purchase scheme where the payment for hiring hiring is made in several installments it consists of the principal and the interest but after the last installment the user becomes the owner so the difference between the two is that here the user becomes the owner and here unless the lease is renewed the lesser is the owner and not the user installment purchase similar to higher purchase here the user becomes the owner in the beginning not after the payment of the last payment that's the difference now we have another form of the miscellaneous form and one among the miscellaneous forms unsecured loans and deposits unsecured loans are provided normally by promoters and the amount equals the promoter's contribution required by the financial institutions less the subscribed capital they can also be public deposits that are also unsecured they are borrowed from public for 1 to 3 years now there are special schemes of institutions in india we have idbi having a scheme bill rediscovering scheme and icici suppliers line of credit this scheme is purchase of indigenous machinery on deferred payment basis that means the firm can buy indigenous machinery by deferring its payment but how it is done the seller from whom an asset is purchased by the firm discounts the bill that is accepted by the firm with a commercial bank and this commercial bank in turn rediscounts it with idbi so finally idbi pays the money and the company the firm makes the payment to idbi later similar thing is done by icici suppliers line of credit <coughs> it is similar to the bill rediscovering scheme of idbi so here the seller directly discounts the bill with icici so the difference is in this case the seller can discount the bill with any commercial bank who in turn in turn rediscounts it with idbi and here the seller discounts the bill directly with icici then there are different other forms of sources of capital this is particularly for government in particular various state governments offer different types of incentives financial incentives to firms to set up their 
companies in those in their states. For example, subsidies may be offered on fixed capital investment if they are in the backward areas of the state or taxes may be deferred by 5 to 12 years. So, it is like an interest free loan or sales tax state level sales tax may be exempted on finished goods. So, these are also different sources of capital. Then short term loan from financial institutions for 1 to 3 years and they are usually unsecured. Commercial paper a short term unsecured promissory note issued by the firm usually for 90 to 180 days 3 months to 6 months. Still another form is called factoring. A factor is a financial institution offering services related to management and financing of credit sales. So, basically it is about credit sales. It has the responsibility of collecting the accounts from the buyer. In this case what happens 70 to 80 percent of the credit sales is given as loan. Interest and commission are charged to the firm. And in our country SBI factoring and commercial services limited and can bank factoring limited provide such services. Next securitization, it involves packaging a designated pool of assets and issuing securities that are collateralized by the underlying assets and their cash flows. Collateralized means it is used as these underlying assets are used as mortgages as security as security. The pool of assets are then transferred to a special purpose vehicle or a trustee usually called a SPV. Then these assets are taken off the balance sheet of the firm. That means, they now as if they now belong to this particular body called special purpose vehicle. Special purpose vehicle now issues securities backed by the pool of assets held by it. These securities are called PTCs or pass through certificates because cash flows received from the pool are passed on to the holders of the securities on a pro rata basis after deduction of the service fee. So, we see here that this is a very novel way that certain assets are pulled together and are transferred to a company or a trustee called a special purpose vehicle who in turn issue securities and all the cash flows from these assets are passed on to the holders of the securities this is called securitization. Next form of of sourcing capital is venture capital. Venture capital is very much required for young private companies who have great promise in their product or service. So, this is a very good form of capital for these companies and in the last 10 years it has gained momentum not only in other countries in India also. For young companies with risky propositions, but promising prospects and with expectedly high rates of return, such companies are usually funded from the venture capital. Now, how it is formed? Capital is provided by venture capital firms or VCF. VCFs raise capital from a number of fund investors such as financial institutions, corporations and individuals. 
such investors do not need dividend or interest but they want long term capitalization and increased net worth of the company because they would like to hold certain shares of the company managers of venture capital firms charge investors a fixed annual fee something like 2% of the capital and retain 20% of the capital gain realized from the investment so that's the charge the vca receives for the services they offer so vca is a trust or a company and has to register with sebi and cannot access public investors so it has to get private funds to raise its capital to be able to give it to the needing firms icici ventures was the first to offer such venture capital in 1988 a venture is a partial owner he is just not a lender who is interested in only security and payback he wants high return on investment and they are interested therefore in good management as well as in a good product then there are informal risk capital and or angel financing source here basically it's informal as the name indicates here wealthy individuals invest their money in young fledgling firms they may consist of senior corporate managers successful businessmen enthusiasts for whom investing is a hobby they may be even professionals or they may be serious investors and such money can be used as seed for starting a new business capital can also be raised in international market there are different forms one is euro market or offshore market here it is basically a collection or a syndicate of international banks an indian bank can access the euro markets euro market to raise euro currency loan or raise global depository receipts and euro currency convertible bonds now let's see what these three things are euro currency loan gdr or global depository receipts and euro currency convertible bonds first euro currency loan it's a deposit of currency in a bank outside the country of of the currency for example euro dollar is a dollar deposit in a bank outside us similarly euro yen etc so what happens to get a loan borrower pays a floating interest rate linked to libor which is called london interbank offer rate or sibor singapore interbank offer rate so that's the interest rate the borrower pays so that is linked to or indexed to these internationally accepted rates suppose a us firm buys jute from an indian company then the us firm pays a dollar check to the indian company the indian company can deposit this check with a swiss bank then in that case it's a euro dollar deposit because it's a dollar paid to another bank not the bank of the place of its origin it is a swiss bank so against this deposit now the indian company can take a loan 
this is euro currency loan. Euro currency bonds or notes, these are issued outside the country in which in whose currency it is denominated. For example, euro dollar bonds for outside US. Lending rates are usually lower than the bonds in the domestic markets. Now, lastly, the global depository receipts, the GDR. Global GDR issues are deemed to be foreign direct investment, the so called FDIs. A firm issuing GDR must have the approval of the Ministry of Finance and the Foreign Investment Promotion Board. That is, these are the two Indian organs through which the GDR can be issued by a firm. The firm's shares are first held by a depository, usually a large international bank. This bank receives the dividends, the reports, etc., and issues the claims against the shares held by this bank. These claims are called depository receipts. Each receipt being a claim on a specified number of shares. GDRs are denominated in a convertible currency, usually US dollar. They are listed and traded on a major on major stock exchanges. So, these are foreign direct investment, this is the instrument through which foreign direct investment can be obtained. Foreign domestic markets, Indian companies can issue securities directly on the domestic capital market of foreign countries, unlike going through the process of GDR. Then there are many export credit schemes, many major industrial countries have established export credit agencies to finance exports of capital goods and related technical services. Examples like US Exim, J, J Exim, Harms and COFES and these agencies, they are international agencies, they follow guidelines under the Born Union Convention. Now, friends, what we have covered so long, very hurriedly we went through, of course, we have seen that any company would require capital to start to continue to grow throughout its life. It's, it requires fixed capital, it requires working capital and there are different ways through which capital can be raised. One is public offering, public offering of securities, security basically means common stock or preference stock and bonds or debentures. Normally, common stock financing, those who hold common stock or equity stockholders, they are the real owners of the company. They have right to vote, but they also run the risk if the company gets liquidated without 
giving much of the returns that they expected. Dividends may not be paid to them. Whereas, the preference stockholders, they are also owners, but they do not have the right to vote, but they are sure of getting the dividends in time or belated, belatedly. Now, when government issues bonds, they are usually not secured and they are called bonds. Whereas, when private firms offer or get the money from the public, they are called debentures and usually they are secured. So, this is the basic difference. Now, apart from these debt financing and the equity financing, there are different other forms of raising capital and we have discussed quite a lot of them and in particular we have discussed various forms of innovative bonds, bonds that are indexed, bonds indexed with uh, uh, treasury bill interest rates, they are indexed bonds, they can be discount bonds or the zero interest rate bonds and there are different other forms. We have also seen venture capital as an extremely good and popular way of getting funds to start a new business. Those companies which are starting newly for them venture capital is a very very good source of raising money to start their business. Usually, when a new company starts, the public is not very sure, the lenders are not very sure about the success of the company. It is at that place that the venture capitalists or venture capital firms take the risk and provide the required fund, but in return they, they are partial owners they like to see that the company does very well, gets a good return on investment. There are also angel financing in which some professionals or wealthy citizens may also give money to start a business. Thus, there is a large number of sources for getting capital and for any new company they have to find out which is best for them. So, we have discussed different forms of uh, different sources of capital and in our next lecture we shall cover the certain aspects of entrepreneurship. Thank you very much.